first of all, uh, let me start with a quick introduction of myself. So my name is Vlad Savchenko. I'm working as the senior solutions engineer here at Starwind Software Company, and I will be your today's host for this webinar. Yeah. So as you can see on your screen today, we'll be discussing the very interesting topic. We call it uh, the virtualization showdown. So today's topic of that multiple, um, so I would say it's even the subtopic, the VMware vSphere versus uh, Proxmox V, and the main topic of our series of webinars that we already did, it's virtualization showdown. So yeah, so we'll be continuing today and we'll be comparing uh, the VMverse platform with uh, the Proxmox V. Yeah, so with that, with the further ado, uh, without the further ado, yeah, let's jump to our um, agenda and see what we'll be discussing today. So yeah, so first of all, we'll meet our today's contenders and do quick introduction to them. After that, we'll talk a bit more about I would call it our hero of today's webinar. It's the Proxmox. Then after the quick, uh, more depth introduction to it, we'll talk about its deployments and the system requirements. After that, after we will meet our today's hero or uh, today, uh, the Proxmox, then we'll start the actual comparison between the VMware and Proxmox, and we'll start with the features. As you can see, then we will go to management and monitoring, then we'll be licensing and support. For, uh, for last, um, I would say section of the comparison, we'll talk about the store, I'm um, sorry, storage options for both um, platforms. After that, we'll do a quick demo. Uh, we, uh, the Starwind, company as the storage company was also working with uh, Proxmox as well as the vSphere, so we support in both of them. So on the demo section, we'll uh, show you a quick demonstration of how our solution, our software product called vSense Software works with the Proxmox platform. Yeah. And the last section of our today's webinar will be the Q&A session where I will be glad to answer all of your questions. So yeah. So right, yeah, we saw our today's agenda. And before um, kicking into our today's topic, um, let me mention that this webinar, again, let me mention that this webinar continues our series of webinars, uh, where we're trying to find a solid alternative to VMware's vSphere virtualization platform. We already compared it to Windows Server with Hyper-V and Overt, in our two previous webinars. And if you like this webinar, then consider also checking those two on our website. Yeah. All right, then. So at this point, we are done with all of those kind of uh, organizational moments. So we can jump to our today's topic. And yeah, first of all, let's be clear. Uh, the VMware is a leader in the virtualization world nowadays. Um, it's no doubt about that. They've been on the market for over two decades now. So while I was preparing for this webinar and checking the information, I checked a couple of uh, sources to find the market share of the VMware's platform. And on average, all those sources stated that they presented over 50% of the market. And just just think about it. Half of the world uses the VMware virtualization platform. And yeah, that says a lot about the product. So uh, with just even this piece of information, we can uh, casually name VMware as the king of virtualization world. Yeah. And yeah, with Knowing that with that piece of information in my head uh, popped a very simple question. Why do we even need to find an alternative to such a great solution? Yes. Why do we need to do that? And as well, uh, after that, I just understood that the answer uh, to this question is pretty simple as well. So first, it's the prices. Like everything in today's world, it's, uh, it is becoming more expensive and the virtualization market, it's no exception. It's the same like the rest of the world, the rest of the market. So yeah, 
Um, secondly, as you all know, uh, and it's most important, uh, the VMware was recently acquired by Broadcom. So based, based on that information and a lot of the news that are popping up every day, and there are a lot of the speculations on the internet about this deal and especially about its aftermath. Again, price changes, discontinued products, and the lease could go on and on and on. So, yeah. And finally, when you have, when you know your options, you're prepared. And if you're prepared, then you're ready for the most situations and there are possible outcomes. So now, everyone, uh, back to our question. What are the alternatives for the vSphere? So, as I mentioned, we already checked Hyper-V and Overt, and today's uh, new contender that will try to, I would say, uh, take the crown from the v, uh, VMware vSphere platform, uh, that crown of the king of the virtualization world. So our new contender is another open source solution called Proxmox. It is, it is very popular nowadays among the home labbers, but is it the only option for it? Let's find out and talk more about what it actually is. Yeah. So what's Proxmox? Uh, first, uh, let me start with a few with a couple of words about its history. So, in 2005, two Linux enthusiasts and developers founded the Proxmox Server Solutions. Uh, first product that this new company was developing and providing to the market, it was just a simple mail gateway. Then the company started to focus on developing efficient and easy to manage Linux software product. So everyone is able to build a secure, stable and scalable IT environment. And with that focus on those kind of things in early 2008, company released the first, uh, first version of the Proxmox um, virtualization platform and started its journey and continues to do it to do to this day yeah so now let's find out what's what proxmox is well, really really is yeah so proxmox is an open source virtualization platform uh, that allows users to create and manage virtual machines and containers on a single physical host machine uh, proxmox virtual environment or proxmox v for short or PV even shorter, yeah. Um, it's a flagship product of Proxmox, which provides a web-based user interface uh, for managing virtual machines, containers, clusters, and all other resources provided by this platform. Also, Proxmox is based on the several main, main components. The first one and the most, most important, it's Debian. It's a Linux distribution that is used as the operating system base for the Pro Proxmox platform. Next, we have two virtualization components. First is kernel-based virtual machine, or KVM for short, and it's a full virtualization solution for the Linux on x86 hardware containing all of the required virtualization extensions. So the KVM is used for creating those virtual machines, running them and providing all of the um, required resources and extensions to them to properly run them. Second virtualization component, it's Linux containers or LXC for short. Yeah, and it's an operating system level virtualization method for running multiple isolated Linux systems or containers on a host uh, using a single Linux kernel. Yeah. So let's move on to for other components that we have in the Proxmox. And next two are the two storage, storage ones. Um, I would say the two main storage ones that most of the time are used in the Proxmox. And those are GlusterFS and the SAF. So GlusterFS is a scalable network file system suitable for data intensive tasks like uh, cloud storage or media streaming. And second, which is the SAF, it's a storage platform that is designed to allow object, log and file storage from a single system. 
So as well, at the end for this section, we have two monitoring components that is used in Proxmox, and those are Graphite and InfluxDB. Okay, so we made uh, that quick introduction to Proxmox. So now let's talk more about its system requirements and deployment methods. And like other virtualization platform, Proxmox has its own requirements. So uh, we took the data from the Proxmox website. So in your screen, you see the recommended minimal system requirements. So let's talk more about each category in more depth. So first of all, let's um, determine uh, the two, I would say, factors or approaches. So we uh, divided the recommended minimal requirements uh, between the two approaches, uh, which is listed on the website. So two approaches of installation, production use and the testing or validation. So our um, discussion or sharing of the information will be uh, based around those two approaches and their requirements. Yeah. So first, um, I would say subcategory or um, yeah, the category itself. Yeah, it's deployment method. So for production, for production use, in most cases, it is a bare metal installation of the Proxmox on the hardware. Yeah. If you're testing it, then you can go either with bare metal installation or deploy it as a virtual machine. For a VM deployment, uh, you need to have a virtualization solution that is supporting nested virtualization. So you can provide all of the resources to the virtual machine to test everything. Also, Proxmox states that for both production and testing scenarios, you can deploy Proxmox on running 64-bit Debian to have a custom partition layout configuration. Okay, so let's move to the next category, and it's uh, first hardware category, and it's the CPUs. So for production use, Proxmox requires server-grade CPU, uh, or CPUs, a couple of those, depending on the configuration, with a virtualization flag enabled, and a 64-bit mode supported. Uh, for testing, you need to have a CPU that supports 64-bit mode. Yeah. Next, hardware um, requirement for the hardware component or the next hardware component is the motherboard. So again, for the production, we have requirement of a server grade motherboard for testing or evaluating the Proxmox platform. You need to have the motherboard that supports Intel or AMD virtualization technology. So we're just quickly looking on the first two, um, I would say categories, so the CPU and motherboard, we can see that Proxmox is very agnostic in terms of hardware, unlike the inverse platform with its strict hardware compatibility list. Yeah, I agree that for testing, uh, you can test the VMware's well on the um, different hardware, so you have a lot of options to test it, but with the compatibility list, I meant the production. So if you, for example, tested it and then you want to implement it to the production, you're meeting that strict hardware compatibility list. So then if you meet the, those requirements from that list, you have the support for the VMware. If not, then sometimes they can refuse to provide you the support. Yeah. But in any case, so let's move to the next category. Uh, so the next is memory. And here everything is pretty straightforward and simple. So for production, Proxmox requires, as a platform, it requires at least two gigabytes of the operating system for operating system itself, and its package, and all of those features that are included in that entire package of uh, operating system. For testing, it's just one gigabyte, and as per the Proxmox uh, website, it's more than enough to test the platform. Okay. So now we move to the storage. And for storage, we have two um, subcategories. Yeah, so it's operating system storage and the virtual machine storage, which is the main storage that used for the production. So for operating system storage and for production use, 
Proxmox requires to have either hardware rate or ZFS with SSD cache and enable. For testing, it could be just a single drive. For the production virtual machine, so for, for production data, uh, Proxmox requires either hardware rate or ZFS or Ceph configured. So you have that local redundancy, so it prevents the potential uh, data loss in the case of the different accidents, I would call them. For the testing, it's uh, pretty straightforward. So you can use that same single drive that you use for uh, the operating system. Yeah. So now let's talk more about the networking, which is the last category for this section. So for production, we need at least one gigabit NIC. Uh, the recommendation is to have uh, 10 gigabit or higher, but the choice of the throughput for most of the time depends on the storage that you will use. And, else, and also the recommendation is to have a networking redundancy. Uh, yeah, so for testing, Oxmux on their website states that it's just a single one gigabit NIC more than enough to test everything. 